What's going on, people? I'm Josh Denzel, and I'm here with England and Aston Villa defender Tyro Mings to find out a little bit more about what footballers get up to when they're not on the pitch. This is Side Hustles, presented by Budweiser. Ty, how you doing, bro? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? I'm not bad. Last time I saw you, it was at St. George's Park. It was, yeah. It was in international duty. Unfortunately, we didn't get to work together, but here we are now, mate. Here we are now. We're here to talk about my journey, but what a journey you've been on, All mate. Right, we, cool. di we digress. All right, cool, cool. All right, we'll crack straight on into it. So how did you find making the Side Hustles film? Like, what, what was your like personal experience? I really enjoyed it. Um, it's obviously a, a different part of my life, of course, and I found this a really interesting way and a really creative way to um, really dive into my passions outside of football and what I get up to really mould me into a better person and allow me to be a better player. The things that I do outside of football, especially my interior design business, is is obviously important to me. But the creating of the film, I've never really been around too many TV cameras when it comes to creating content. And this is a big one. I was really impressed, really impressed by the amount of detail we went into really impressed by the amount of content that we were able to shoot um, and, and ultimately how the story came across in the end, the story of how KTM was set up and how it kind of runs in parallel with my football life. So there are there are some really good parts to take from it um, if you're a neutral and if you're really interested in what I get out to off the pitch, then I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Can you break down what the inspiration was with you starting KTM Design and kind of take it right back to the beginning and give us a little bit of history? I was from a property background anyway before football so one Saturday I was a mortgage advisor and the following Saturday I was on the bench at, well I was in the squad to travel with the first team to Ellen Road so my life kind of changed overnight and it was only really when I got injured at Bournemouth that I thought now is a perfect time. It's a good way to put my two passions together and it's a good way to um, learn about business. I mean I've, I've set up a few since then and, and in a few different industries and I kind of find that the only the best way for me to learn about business and learn about different industries is to set up a business in that industry and it seems a bit backwards but they're not really <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go jump in the deep end <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it's like and and I mean you can read great books and you can shadow great people and you can um dive into really interesting podcasts but I think sometimes there are only things that you can learn through going through them and and ultimately that's what what gives you the experience? Was there ever a moment when you're when you're making the film and you're kind of putting your your business out there to the world? We all know what football fans are like, especially that you think they're going to go, "What's he doing in interior design? What's he doing in property? Like, stick to football." We hear it all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So for for the start and for the launch of the company, me actively being involved in, and being kind of in the forefront of everything we were doing was helpful because it was in Bournemouth and our first job was from a Bournemouth fan um, doing his office. So it had its pros at the start. Did you give him mates rates? No, I didn't actually, couldn't afford to. <laughs> um, then we kind of thought we, we want the business to be standalone and we want the portfolio to be strong enough that people are coming to us for the right reasons. So we took me off of the website, took me um, out of kind of visibility and ran KTM as a standalone interior design company. And um, it was only really then when we started to, to build an organic um, client base and, and get jobs based on our experience and based on the quality of the work. So my face helps at times, but then like you said, there's also a side of football fans that when things aren't going right on the pitch, it's oh, you should be focusing on football. So whilst everything's great, it's great that a footballer is doing something off the pitch and it's great that he's a, a, a more rounded individual and it's great that he's in touch with the outside world. But then when things aren't going so well, it's you should be sticking to football. So yeah. it's a double-edged sword uh, and something you have to balance quite carefully. I think you'd agree with me in saying there's definitely a change in the perception of footballs. And I think you know, your side hustles and side hustles in general is helping with that. During lockdown, I went on um, a podcast with Hector Bellerin and we were speaking quite a lot about um, our businesses or, or interests off of, off the pitch and really how much it helps keep you um, settled or focused or kind of humble in a way as well because you're always learning new things. Um, and ultimately, we want to be the best footballers we can, but we also want to be good humans, we want to be good men and we want to be 
good brothers, fathers, friends. So there's always, uh, like I said, a, a double-edged sword where you can be something but not too much. And obviously we understand that football is our main job. Football is our main source of income. So nothing would ever replace that. I think it's important that players are grounded and more rounded. So um, for me, it definitely helps. What I want to know is what does KTM design mean to you personally? Yeah, everything, I guess. It's the first It's the first business I've set up. One thing that we can't take for granted is having a, um, having a sustainable business. I mean, everything went into lockdown and unfortunately a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of businesses went under and we're fortunate enough to, yeah, have, have made sustainable decisions along the way. And success to me, as long as we can continue that is, uh, is all I care about really. How do you find juggling being a professional footballer at the top of the game and juggling kind of running your own company, KTM Design? Do you find it difficult or is it quite easy for you? If there was anybody thinking about doing something off the pitch, a team around you who, who are just as um, engaged and invested and energetic and passionate about it as you are, is definitely my, my tip to start. Since we set the company up five years ago, I mean, I was an injured player at Bournemouth um, when the company was set up. And there's no way I could have done that unless I had a really strong team around me, both on and off the pitch. Tyrone, your journey hasn't been the easiest to get where you are. You've gone slightly different route, but what are some of the obstacles that you've had to overcome to get to where you are now? Obviously I was released in Southampton at, at 15, 16. Um, and then I've got, a, I've got a book actually with some letters. My mum wrote to every club in the, every, it's so 72 clubs in the Football League, wrote to every club um, about me saying, oh, my son's just been released <laughs> as mums do. Um, yeah, you know, and ride or die. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Of course, they never really wrote back. Some wrote back saying, oh, we feel the allegation, but I think that was maybe five or six and the rest of them never did. So um, I guess that was a reality check. Um, I went on trial at a host of clubs from there and, and was turned down by all of them. Found myself in school, found myself in uh, in sick form, found myself in non-league, found myself in an office job, in a pub job. So I had a lot of different experiences, obviously. The injuries were awful. I, I, obviously, I got injured six minutes into my Premier League debut and was out for 15 months. So, um, come back, got a stress fracture in my back. I was out for another eight, nine months. So, yeah, like I said, they're things that you can never prepare for and they're things that um, ultimately have the potential to derail careers or take careers in a different path. But if I look back on my journey, there's not one thing really that I would change because I think it's made me a better person. It's made me a better player as well. They're basically the geezers going down their local pub saying, Mingzi used to serve me. Now look. I've been back to that pub as well that I used to work and it's, uh, and it's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful pie. You know, the business has been running for five years now. It's obviously very successful. But what does the, what does the immediate future hold for KTM Design? We moved into project management um, about 12 months ago and we're just about to venture into our first um, project. But as, as every part of the business that we've gone through so far, I'm sure will be filled with, with problems and obstacles and we won't truly know what we're getting involved in um, until we actually do it. I'm sure there are loads of people watching who would like to create their own side hustle and you know following in your footsteps with, with what you've done. Have you got any advice to those people on how they can how they can best do that? I would say go for it, of course. That's my that's my motto, but um, make sure you're passionate about what you're doing. Because things do get tough. I mean, I've got some great mentors in the in the world of interiors, in the world of architecture, in the world of property development. I've got some really great people that I've uh, a network of people that I've built up over the years where I can ask them questions. I can tap into their knowledge, no matter how hard things get in business. Um, as long as you're still passionate about what you're doing, of course, it will it will carry you through. Because ultimately, everybody's path is different. 100%. Well, that's it from me and Zara. And if you want to watch the full Side Hustles episode presented by Budweiser, head over to Goals YouTube. There's also episodes from Enya Luko and Wilfred Zaha. What are you waiting for?